Hey, what is up everyone? This is Jake and I wanted to do a quick video on the painting of Vader I did for the Star Wars Shatterpoint game. Uh, super fun game, excellent miniatures, and I did some OSL in a very easy way. Now, if you don't know what OSL is, it is Object Source Light. What it is essentially is you have a source of light in the miniature that is casting light on the miniature. So what I have did for this one is his lightsaber, obviously. That's the big bright glowy thing. It's going to be casting a red light on him. So I'm going to go over how I did that. And I'll be completely honest, I'm not very good at whip blending. It takes a lot of practice, a lot of patience. And I was doing this on stream, so I really didn't want to take the time to do it. And honestly, I've just got to the point where I, I have so many miniatures to paint. My pile of gray shame is so big that I just need to get the stuff painted. I don't need to worry about wet blending and doing all these really nice little miniatures because I just enjoy a lot more to have a miniature painted rather than to have a pile of them that are unpainted, if that makes any sense. Um, so I'm just going to go step by step through this painting process and then I'll go more in depth on the OSL when we get there. And I apologize for the quality on this video. This was actually taken from a live stream I did a couple weeks ago and I really liked how it turned out. So I kind of wasn't to just talk to everyone about it and, uh, and kind of how I did it. But uh, I'll be doing more in the future and definitely will be spending more time focusing on the actual miniature because it was kind of hard to keep it in frame the whole time while talking to people on stream. And also I may have been drinking. So yeah, it makes it even harder. So first off, easy enough with Vader. I primed him black, which made him about 90% completed, which was pretty sweet. And I'll drop a little note here. When priming, you want to always make sure you do real quick dusting coats. You don't ever want to slowly coat and cake up the primer on an object, especially on a miniature, because it really starts killing the detail really fast. You want to just lightly mist. And this is a rattle cam primer. Rattle cam primer works absolutely fine for priming your miniatures. You just got to know how to do it well. You just got to, from at least eight to 10 inches away, you want to just make sure you dust over them. And it covers it really well. I use the Rust-Oleum 2X Cover Black uh, Flat Primer, and it works perfectly fine. It's not too shiny. It's not too glossy. It's not too matte. It's just right. And originally I had painted the lightsaber red, but you don't want the lightsaber to be red because it's going to be casting a red glow. And the reason for that is the object that is going to be casting light needs to be brighter than the light it's actually casting. So I painted the lightsaber pink, like a good bright pink color, and then took a straight red and started dry brushing where it was going to be casting light on. Now, a lot of the times you want to be doing this not with dry brushing, you want to be doing it with wet blending because it does look a lot better. I was just trying to save time. So you can dry brush OSL. It just looks better if you if you wet blend it. Next, I painted the base a beige color because it's, uh, it's it's meant to be sand and it's on Tatooine. So I'm going to make sure that the base for this guy, as well as the piece of terrain it comes with, because it comes in like this diorama box set, comes with him, comes with Obi-Wan, and they're on this, uh, this kind of like sandy flat uh, surrounded by these buildings. Um, kind of having battle there. So I wanted to make sure it all matched and I really like that sand color. And once I got that down, I went ahead and washed it with some Army Painter Strong Tone, which is just a dark brown wash. Uh, I let it kind of run into the recesses where it needed to, dabbed it off some here and there. I didn't want to get too deep, but then uh, I pulled out the trusty uh, hair dryer because that's what really helps save me time on these. And now I will say, a lot of the times you don't want to be using a hair dryer. You want things to dry naturally. It does help a lot. Um, for the acrylics, it's not as important, but I have noticed with the washes, especially the newer Army Painter washes, whenever you wash and then you dry them with a hair dryer, that heat tends to crack them. So you want to make sure, you have to understand this paint's pretty fragile like it's it's very high pigment and it's not meant to really be dried with a hair dryer so don't do what I'm doing just do what I'm saying don't don't do that <laughs> I'm just very impatient like I said this is for a live stream so now once I did that I went ahead and painted the metallics in which is this some some of his buckles and his buttons and the big piece of debris he's gonna be throwing at uh, I guess th this is the scene from Obi-Wan so <laughs> he's pulling up that debris from the ground so once I had the lightsaber pink it was the shade I wanted it to I went straight red and started dry brushing on to the ground there and then once I went to the ground I started working my way up now you want to keep in mind where the lightsaber is going to be focused at the light from it obviously because it's a lightsaber it's going to emit light in every direction but you want to make sure that the parts that are closer to the lightsaber are going to be more saturated with that red that's the most important part Next, I started on the blue moon glow for the back of the cape there, and I did a little bit more wet blending on this. Uh, capes do tend to look really good wet blended, and it's really tough to get them to look good dry brushed. So I actually did a little bit of both on this. I wet blended it, and it looked like it was a little too intense when I wet blended it, so I went ahead and actually dry brushed over it. Uh, it actually turned out way better than I thought it was going to. So I went to the high points, such as the top of the helmet and the ridges of the cape that were flowing upward, and I put like a blue highlight. Blue always looks so good for a black highlight, 
it just has that good little effect. Uh, look at old Batman comics. I mean, some Neil Adams are that was one of my favorite depictions of Batman when he had that nice blue highlight uh, that was highlighting his black. So I always like to do that on black capes and things like that, highlight with blue, because it just looks really good and looks really natural. Once I got the ridges of the cape and stuff highlighted, and I went ahead and edge highlighted where I need to edge highlight, I went to my next color and made it a little bit brighter. And what you want to do is just you want to make the lines a little thinner and a little thinner. So you start with your base blue there, then you make the next one a little lighter and make that line a little thinner. You want to be able to sell the blending of the darkness to the lightness with that blue. Now this is the most important part when you're doing your dry brushing or you're doing your wet blending even with your OSL. You want to make sure that the brightest areas are the areas that face towards the object and are the raised areas like where the highlights would be. So you go and you take white paint and you just highlight the edges of where that light source is coming from. So it's coming down and from the right there. So the right side of Vader, his edge of his cloak there, the ridges on his gloves, the edge of his shoulder, the right side of his mask, those are all going to be highlighted. And once you get those in there and you start dry brushing over them or wet blending over them, the areas are going to pop way better because you're dry brushing over a white base rather than a black base. I know that sounds pretty basic, but these are little things I didn't really think of until I started doing them and I saw them online and I saw people doing them. I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. So I'm just trying to, you know, help you guys along with that too. And honestly, I think the white highlights by themselves give it a really cool like comic book effect. I think it's pretty rad. And by this point, I was getting really excited to do it. So once I got that done, I started dry brushing with just that straight red again. And you can notice here, it looks awesome like right away. It starts sailing really, really quickly. Because where you have the same tone going over everything, but you have those white highlights, you have certain areas that pop. And I think it really sells a lot. Now, I put a lot of red on this, maybe even a little too much, but I got pretty excited doing it because it started looking really cool. And that's typically what happens. If I, if I do something that looks good, I, I will inevitably just screw it up because I keep on. But I think at this point, it was looking really good. I, I even touched the, uh, the debris there a little bit with red because it is metallic and it would pick up light a little easier than his black cloak would. Uh, I put a little bit more on the ground there, and I made sure to just keep looking from the direction of the lightsaber to make sure, essentially you want to take it and like, if you are the lightsaber, look at Vader. Wherever you're seeing, that's where he's going to be, uh, the, most of the light's going to be cast on him. So this was the moment of truth. I was worried how this is going to look, but I actually, I think it turned out pretty cool. It turned out way better than I thought it was going to, to be honest, because um, I really hated how, uh, how those transitions weren't really transitions. They were just three different colors of blue. Um, but once I dry brushed over it, I, I really think it helped pull it together. It, it, it was essentially the same principle as the front, like my little white highlights. So obviously if I have my white highlights on black, it's going to be big white blobs everywhere. But once I dry brush over it, it kind of has a uniform color bringing it all together. And that's kind of the same principle on the back there. And I am pretty happy with it. Like I think it turned out pretty good. Like I said, I'm not very good at whip blending. I'm just not patient enough for it. I, like I could do it, I think, better than I'd normally do it if I just took the time to do it. I'm just really impatient. It's the ADHD. It's terrible. And I wanted to get Vader ready to play with because man, I can't wait to throw some Vader in some squads and start slashing some people up. I love me some Vader. But yeah, I think it turned out okay for what it was, uh, especially for me not to be super, super experienced at OSL. I try it all the time. I usually just fail at it all the time, but this is probably one of my favorite times I've done it, especially where it had the contrasting red and blue colors. I thought it turned out pretty cool. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Just drop me a comment below. Let me know if you liked it. If you didn't like it, either way, I value your opinion. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm glad to try to help you as much as I can, um, even though, you know, I'm still learning myself. We're all learning here, so. But if you need some pointers and I can give them to you, I will do that for free. All for my services for free. <laughs> but thank you all so much for watching. I do appreciate it and keep on drawing on, or in this case, keep on painting on. Later.